I'm often asked, where's my favorite place to visit in the Carolinas? Well, for me, that's a problem because I have a lot of favorite places. But one thing's for sure, Hatteras Island is certainly at the top of the list. Ranger Chris took me on a tour of this famous tower. <laughs> that is, once we got his proper title sorted out. Do you want to put Imperial Park Ranger? <laughs> Supreme Park Ranger. Supreme yes. Park Ranger. <laughs> so Ranger Chris, how many steps are there in the lighthouse? From interior, there's 248, but we like to count the exterior nine steps that all the visitors uh -huh. will travel, so about 257. All right, well, let's try them out. All right, let's do it. <laughs> how many times have you done this trip? Um, this is my fourth year here, so we're in the couple hundreds of of journeys upward. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and just so everybody knows, there is no elevator. I don't see one. So this is really <laughs> an, a nice little endurance walk. Well, that's one of our top questions is where's the elevator? And uh, we always tell people we're working on it. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> ah, so we have a landing so people can take a break as they go up. It, yeah, these are, these are very thoughtfully put in by the designers. So when the keeper's carrying up his oil, you could take a break every 31 steps. Okay. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here is, is our cool alcoves, which I, uh, I really like these. Uh, see how this one on the first landing is very sure. deep and it's very large. As you keep going up, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. As we get higher, it gets more dramatically pulled in to account for the uh, different sizes. All right, we gotta go up there. <laughs> All right. Hey, this is a bit like the stair stepper, except you're in history, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just imagine how many trips the lighthouse keeper took up these stairs, but he was carrying about, roughly about 70 pounds of oil up every time. You had to keep the light on. You had to keep it on. As we made our way to the top, I learned why having a lighthouse at Cape Hatteras is so crucial. The reason why the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is here is to serve as a warning to mariners about the very complicated and very dangerous shoals, which is basically sandbars. Right. And why that's happening, there's two major ocean currents meet right here at Hatteras. Mm -hmm. And that causes all sorts of problems. Those ocean currents bring lots of sand and they dump it right here at Cape Hatteras. So it's sort of like a brick wall, and so to speak. So a boat, if it were to hit it, it would just stop. That, that's right. It, it would wreck. It would uh, get a big hole in it and sink, most likely. This is called Graveyard of the Atlantic for a reason. Okay. <laughs> and uh, lots of ships met their fate here. And that's why they said, well, we need a lighthouse here. Right. Because mariners went, oh, hey, we're at Cape Hatteras. We, we might want to go way around Cape Hatteras. Wow, so uh, I can see it's getting much more narrow now. Yes. And mm -hmm. where are we at? Are we about halfway? Yeah, there's was eight landings, and we're on the fifth landing. So okay. we, we're around in third base. So I'm guessing that because of the sand barges and keeping mm -hmm. a lot of the main boats away, was that a reason that the pirates, you know, favored coming here because it was safer for them? Absolutely. The pirate folks knew that, hey, North Carolina has a lot of sandbars. Nobody's really going to chase us in here. If they did, you know, they may wreck. So it took a calculated effort by the royal governor of Virginia to take care of Blackbeard back in 1718. And let's not forget about the most important part of the lighthouse, the light. Back when this was first constructed in 1870, they had a, a really exciting lens called a Fresnel lens. They were built in France and it was shipped over. And um, this was sort of like the Apple computer of the day. It was pretty high tech and it's still high tech today. And it really helped save lives out at sea. And it was a huge, gigantic light. You could see it used to sit right where this circular board is here. So this and, would have been the base. And it would go all the way through this giant hole here right. and all the way to the top. A uh, wow. gigantic lens, and it would actually spin. And you say, well, well, how does it spin? There's no electricity. This is 1870s. There was a clockwork device within the light, and wow. there was weights that hung down from, from the middle of the light, right where we're standing. We would go all the way down the lighthouse, and it would, it would sort of counterbalance each other to spin the light. Did the uh, light keepers not only have to put oil in, but did they have to pull those pulleys, or did they yeah. all that? Yeah, they had a they had a, a wind just like the, wind the clock. Yeah, they had to wind okay. the weights every morning. So that kept it going around. Yeah, a re really fantastic design. Those Fresnel lenses ended up in just about every lighthouse, and here was a first order Fresnel lens, which is the biggest. Wow. 
But today we have a modern aero beacon uh -huh. up there with a thousand watt bulb okay. and uh, with a little sort of reflective mirror behind it and that projects out about 20 miles. Okay. And it spins around and the flash pattern, as we uh -huh. like to call it, is at 7.5 seconds. So if you stand in one spot, it'll technically every, flash every 7.5 seconds. Every 7.5 seconds, seconds mm -hmm. you can see it. Okay. That's right. Great. Well, it's certainly impressive. Final uh, 15 here. And I'm going to go ahead and open the door. Okay. If that's all right. It, believe me, it's going to feel good. Oh, look at that. So this is now uh, part of the National Park System mm -hmm. and it's open to the public. So yes. the Hatteras Lighthouse, if I understand right, mm -hmm. is known worldwide. This image is, is one of the more popular lighthouses. Absolutely. I've driven around other states and I'll see the uh, image of the Hatteras Lighthouse in people's yards. Okay. Like not, not just North Carolina, but far from here. But the, with the unusual striping, which was developed in 1873, that certainly makes Hatteras really stand out. And plus it's the tallest. Yeah, tallest, which So helps. it's the tallest in America. Yes. Okay. Uh, the reason why it's so tall, and most of the East Coast lighthouses are tall, is because if, if you think about it from about, you know, Delaware to Florida, there's not a lot of mountains, or there's not any no. mountains. And the light had to, had to go at least 20 miles to be effective. This is my favorite part of the job is actually working up here when we, uh -huh. when we rotate shifts. But this, I, let's put it this way, I've never had a bad day at work here because I, I love coming here. And, and the lighthouse has kind of just drawn me in for the four years that I've been here. And it's, you know, it, it, there's it's never a bad day here. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, Superior Ranger Chris. I think the world seems pretty darn good from up here too.